Have you tried everything but can't get rid of elephant's foot? Are your prints plagued with z-banding? Is your first layer inconsistent? These problems plague many of us with Ender 3 style machines. But fear not. In this video, I completely rebuild the z-axis of my Ender 3 and solve all these problems. By using a dial gauge and comparing the original with the modified, I will show you quantifiable results and fix the z-axis once and for all. So stick around to find out more. Before we begin, consider subscribing to the channel, and leave a like if you learned something new. Let's start by taking a look at the Ender 3 in its original condition, and try to understand what we are trying to fix. The obvious is the lack of support on one side of the gantry because there is only one lead screw. This results in two main problems. First, the gantry will sag on the unsupported side and you will need to compensate for this by leveling the bed. Second is more troublesome and not so easy to fix. If you have any tight spots, be it due to the condition of the rollers or the extrusions, the layer height will be inconsistent and this will result in the dreaded Z-banding. The next set of problems is a result of the way the lead screw is fixed to the gantry. For some printers, the aluminum plate that holds the nut is not bent properly so the lead screw is not aligned. And in some cases, the lead screw itself is slightly bent, so again some misalignment is present. This causes the lead screw to bind and wobble. This in turn transfers the wobble pattern onto the print. Finally, the last set of problems are related to the way the Z-axis motor is mounted. The entire weight of the gantry rests on the stepper motor, and when moving the gantry up, the lead screw pushes down on the stepper motor. These motors are not designed to take axial loads, meaning parallel to the shaft. There is a spring washer inside the stepper that will compress if any downward force is applied to it. Not only is this additional stress bad for the motor, because of the inconsistent compression of the spring, the layer height will again be inconsistent, further contributing to Z-banding artifacts. Finally, the coupling for the lead screw. If you are using a flexible coupling to correct the misalignment, the springy nature of the coupling will affect the layer height consistency. And if you are using a rigid tight coupling, the motor and lead screw will bind even if there is a slight alignment problem. A combination of all these factors results in what I am going to show next. I am going to bolt a dial gauge directly to the x-axis extrusion. This ensures the dial gauge connection is rigid and we get maximum accuracy. So let's take a look at the original Ender 3, without any modifications to the Z-axis. I am going to start by moving the Z-axis down to zero position to simulate the condition the printer will be in after homing. Then I will move the Z-axis up in 0.1 mm increments. But the actual movement is half of what it is supposed to be, and this only improves slowly. Even at a height of 5 mm we are still not getting perfect 0.1 movements. This is why it can be very difficult to get rid of elephant's foot. Then I will bring down the z-axis again, and this time move it up in 1 mm increments. In the first millimeter you can see we are off our target but more than 0.3, and in the second millimeter, by 0.2. In simple words, if your layer height is 0.2, you have squished more than two whole layers in the first two millimeters. Only then does it start getting better, but still not perfect. What we have seen is the result on the supported side. Next, I will shift the dial gauge to the unsupported side, and here, things are much worse. Again I will start by moving the z-axis down, then move up in 0.1 millimeter increments. And the result is far from what it should be. And looking at 1 mm increments, we can see that on this side we are missing almost 0.8 from the 2 mm. That's almost 50%. So it's safe to conclude that while both sides are inconsistent, the unsupported side is much more so, and it's lagging behind the supported side. Moving on, here we can see how flimsy the 2040 y-axis extrusion is and how much deflection I can achieve with my hand. And here, I am pushing on the Z-axis pillars with my hand. 
so let's start fixing these problems. I had a small problem with my BLV kit. The spacing between the nut slots was very tight, so I had to get out my trusty old Dremel. I will use one of these engraving bits that I got from Banggood. I used an A4 paper to protect the rails from the metal shavings, but it would be much better to do this before assembling the printer. Unfortunately, the dust got everywhere. Finally, it was done. So now we can move on. This is the Z-axis rigidity kit from AliExpress. I am going to use the rods to pull the Z-axis into square. And then lock it in place. Now we have a rigid z-axis that is perfectly aligned, and it won't shift around in the future. Next, I am going to make use of this type of dual z-kit. I am going to start by installing the bearing block, taking care to keep the bearing side on the bottom. The blocks are 45 mm wide, so they need to be out by 2.5 mm. As designed, the pulley is supposed to sit directly on the bearing block. But that's not good. It will increase friction and wear out the block and pulley. The entire weight of the gantry will rest on the blocks, so I am going to put in a thrust bearing. You can use any thrust bearing with an 8mm internal diameter. This will take care of the axial load, and the ball bearing inside the bearing block will bear the radial loads. Then I am going to use a caliper to align the bearing blocks. They need to be perfectly leveled because even a small tilt in the block will make a big difference in the lead screw alignment over its full length. After putting in the lead screws, it is evident that they are not centered. This is why I went through the trouble of grinding down the slots. Now I can move the nut to align it with the screw. But before fixing the nuts, let's take a look at these Oldham couplings and how they can help us in building the ultimate Z-axis. This coupling allows the nut to move in the X and Y plane, but restricts any movement in the Z. This helps us in two ways. First, there will always be some misalignment in the screw and nut, so the coupling will shift the nut into the perfect position. And second, if the screw is bent, even slightly, the coupling will absorb the wobble so it does not transfer to the print. However, because of the clearances required for proper functioning, there will inevitably be some play in the Z direction, and also some rotational movement. To minimize this effect, we need to apply some preload to the dovetails. We can achieve this by hanging the gantry from the coupling, as opposed to the gantry resting on the coupling. Let's see how we can achieve that. I went ahead and fixed the nut to the Oldham coupling so we can install it on the printer. After centering the nut on the lead screw, we need to fix it with M3 nuts. Then, if you have aligned everything properly, any minor misalignment will be absorbed by the Oldham coupling, and the lead screw should slide in like a hot knife in butter. If there is even a slight hint of binding, then you need to go through the alignment steps again. The same needs to be repeated on the other side as well. We are then presented with our next challenge. When the gantry is moving up, it pulls against the bearing block, and all is good because of our thrust bearing. However, when the gantry moves down, there is nothing holding the lead screw in place. Well, except gravity. So there is a high likelihood that the lead screw will occasionally shift up and this will affect our accuracy. So to solve the problem, I designed and printed this piece. I tried to use off-the-shelf metal parts but space was pretty tight on the other side so I had to design this instead. This piece has a ball bearing to take the radial loads, and I will add in a thrust bearing for the axial loads. Similar to the design on top. Then I will use this pulley to lock everything in place. You could use something else but this pulley was most readily available and the perfect size. Finally, to solve all the problems related to the motor, like the spring washer inside, and the issues caused by the coupling, I came up with this contraption. This allows me to fix the motor on top with the lead screw's sink belt. Granted the teeth engagement of the pulley is not ideal, but it works and gets the job done.
I also changed the driven pulleys to a bigger size to get a better resolution, but the belt length was not sufficient. I had to extend it, and meanwhile I ordered a new belt, 650 millimeters, and I used this longer cable to connect to the Z-axis motor. Turned on the printer and moved the Z-axis. Then, disaster struck. If you look at the original Ender 3 stepper cables, you will notice that the middle two cables are swapped. That would be the green and blue in this case. I assumed the new cable was plug and play, and because of that, I burnt the Z-axis stepper driver. As I was not sure what had happened, I tried using the X-axis with the same cable, and guess what? I burnt the X-axis stepper driver as well. Fixing the cable is simple. You need to remove the green and blue cables, which can be done with a small flat screwdriver and swap their positions. The board, however, is a different case. Because the stepper drivers are soldered in place, they cannot be replaced, so I had to order a new board. Unfortunately, the delivery time is quite long. I had to cut this video short as I am unable to run my printer for further testing. In the next video, I will hopefully have received the replacement board so I will continue testing the modified printer and share the before and after results. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.